What's up, college football fans? Sonoy Valenta here once again with the Mean Green Show, and today I'm joined by Jared Kalmus, and we're about to get into all things coach trailer related and this big negotiation that's going on between what we think is between Texas Tech and UTSA. Uh, guys, but before we get into all that, you already know the drill if you're a fan of college football, G5 football, the transfer portal, coaching carousel, conference realignment, any or all of the above, consider hitting that like and subscribe button because that is truly all that we talk about. Jared, thank you so much for jumping on with me on shut on on shut on such short notice. I know we had originally planned to do this tomorrow at some point. You you've had company in town, and then we had some semi breaking news, and you were able to jump on uh, the drop of a hat, and I really appreciate it. But where can everybody find what you do for UTSA, and what is it exactly that you do for UTSA as far as covering their program? Yeah, of course. So well, primarily, you know, I have the Omelette of Audible podcast, uh, which me and my co-host, Jared Trump Bermudez, post uh, once a week during football season and, you know, a couple times per month in the off season. Uh, we also have a Patreon as well where we do, you know, exclusive bonus content, you know, extra episodes, articles, statistical breakdowns, all that good stuff. So uh, that Twitter account is at Alamo Audible if you want to check us out there. Or you can just Google Alamo Audible and find all of our content all over the World Wide Web. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So... Obviously, the the word on the street is that tech is coming down to San Antonio and they're they're still in your man. Yeah, I mean they're they're coming for Coach Trailer and I mean the numbers that we were all hearing, you know, who could blame him? I mean, really, who could blame him? And I know sometimes people probably like us or our friends or something, they're like, Oh, you're already making a million. Why go make four? You're doing something special here. But I mean, that's still you you know, a three million dollar increase annually. I mean, you know. That's you're not going to turn that down. You know, no one would advise you to turn that down if they cared about you. I, and, you know, it's all, you know, the feel goods of everything of, you, you know, what, you, what you're building here and all that. And and that is true. But at the end of the day, that is that's such a, a big jump for your family and kind of more put it into maybe realistic terms for the normal people. If you're making, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year doing something and someone's going to offer you $200,000 a year to go do the same thing somewhere else that is just has a bigger market and whatever it is that you're doing, of course, you're going to take that. Who, why would you not take that? I mean, like, I mean, unless you just, I, I don't know very many people that would, that would not take that is what I'm getting at. Um, so anyway, we were hearing that they were coming down. They were, you know, he's going to be paid. I was hearing like 4 million, 4 million a year. Is that what you were hearing? Yeah, so from what I heard, and of course, none of this is ever going to be public and uh, of course you know, confirmable, uh, but from what I was told, the final offer that Texas Tech extended to Jeff Trailer was a seven-year contract of $42 million. Uh, that is that Steve Sark Sarkeesian money. I mean, that Holy is top moly. of college football, right? So uh, Jeff Trailer turned down a lot of money to stay at UTSA. I mean, all, almost half... Uh, half of the total guaranteed pay yeah wow okay so because that, that was okay so what brett mcmurphy i think he was the first one that reported this is that coach taylor signs a 28 million dollar contract extension <clears throat> excuse me averaging 2.8 million annually before bonuses through 2031 um and they're also increasing the salary pool for assistant coaches and support staff okay so my it sounds like you've already kind of answered that. So, so, so does this mean that tech cannot come down and counter it with an even bigger margin? Is this like a Dundale trailers in San Antonio uh, period end of story? Or is it still, are they still bargaining a little bit? Nothing's ever final. I mean, there's uh, I think a seven and a half million dollar buyout for trailer. If he were to leave within the next year, um, you know, tech has shown that money is not really an object to them. Uh, you know, there's always the joke that, the WTI index for the price of oil, uh, the West Texas index, like when it's high, you know, it's when tech has a lot of money because, uh, you know, they have boosters that own oil and gas companies and they sell those to other oil and gas companies and suddenly have a billion dollars on their hand, right? But, uh, you know, this extension was done for a reason, right? And, and Trailer wouldn't have signed it had if he had the intention to take that tech offer, right? Because all he's doing is making it harder for his future employer and, um, you know, giving them less money to work with in other fields. So, um, I don't see trailer going to tech. I mean, like, that's why this was announced. That's why he signed this contract is to stay at UTSA. And, you know, of course, you know, TCU is likely going to be open in this year, next year, uh, certainly within the next five years. I think it's safe to say as Gary Pat Patterson's career starts to wind down, you know, there's a chance that Baylor opens up, you know, so nothing in coaching is ever guaranteed. Right. But this is a clear sign of commitment from Jeff trailer. 
UTSA put their money where their mouth is, they're going to make him, I think, the third highest paid coach in the group of five. Um, and I believe the two coaches that are paid higher than him are leaving to join P5 conferences, right? So right. Uh, this is a clear indication that you know UTSA is willing to make sacrifices to uh, give Trailer the resources he needs to build a true lasting legacy at UTSA that surpasses you know even his lifetime, uh, and you know theoretically could turn UTSA into an absolute power program, right? Absolutely. And obviously, I can just tell by the way you're talking, uh, as opposed to the way we were messaging each other a few nights ago, uh, yeah. that you are happy and rightfully so. I would be too if I was a UTSA fan, uh, rightfully so. One thing, though, I, I want to hear your take on this is, okay, so that is big money, period, end of story for any G5 program, any G5 program, Boise State, um, UCF. I mean, that's that's just big money for, again, any G5 program. And not to mention, this is UTSA, not the biggest market yet. You know, yeah, maybe up and coming for sure. But as as of today, it's not, it's it's just not there yet. So how does this affect the, I mean, did they just throw the the basketball, like the new basketball? I mean, is that Jeff Trailers? I mean, like what, what went into this, if you happen to know? Or do you think this is just donors coming out of the woodwork? Like how, what do you think went into this A and then B, I guess, what is the, maybe the cost of this that maybe we're not seeing at face value. Yeah. So there's a lot of pieces that go into this, right? Um, you know, I don't know all the, you know, behind closed doors details of like who was involved and how much and all of that. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get some information on that, you know, in the coming weeks maybe. Uh, but there's a lot of factors that go into it that I can speak to. Uh, first off, I don't think many people realize that UTSA was still paying Frank Wilson a million dollars a year, right? So that money comes off of the books, uh, January 1st of, of 2022, right? So that's a million dollars a year right there that UTSA is already paying and they're just paying a better coach <laughs> for that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so that's massive. That alone gets trailer, you know, nearly to the $2 million point per year, right? Um, additionally, you know, when you are in a large market like San Antonio, you have a lot more, I guess, flexibility and revenue streams that you may not have in, in smaller towns, right? So if you notice, if you look at the actual contract that Trailer signed, most of the money is in supplemental compensation. So that can mean a couple of things. Uh, we don't know yet, but my guess is that we might see news of an endowment coming down for the head coaching position. Um, I know that Rice has done this with Mike Bloomgren, where a booster uh, you know, pays a significant portion of his salary, and that head coaching position is endowed by that donor, right? So keep an eye out for that. That could be one avenue. Uh, additionally, there's more money coming in from the American Athletic Conference, right? So UTSA has to plan where they're going to put that money into. And, you know, I think the head football coaching salary is a, is a great place to start. Agreed. Um, and then uh, also there's like marketing agreements as well. So in Coach Trailer's old contract, I, I don't have the number in front of me because I only have his new contract pulled up on my screen. Uh, but a pretty good chunk of his money was coming from sponsorship agreements, you know, from local businesses, you know, to go onto a radio show. Uh, on a weekly basis, you know, do commercials with car dealerships, stuff like that. Um, so I think like likely that there's no one answer of like how UTSA can pay for this. It's more likely that this is a galvanization of the entire San Antonio, you know, business community, as well as the UTSA alumni base of, you know, maybe some small donors pitching in. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, UTSA is extremely invested in the success of the athletics program. And they're a really large institution, you know, approaching 40,000 students with student athletic fees. You can move money around and find a way to do a lot of things when you're a big school in a big market, right? So I think UTSA just got creative and they got the right people involved. And, you know, they, they did what had to be done to, to keep a coach that they truly believe, you know, can lead them to, you know, a, a, a new height for the athletics program and for the university's profile and uh, visibility uh, across the board. Absolutely. Okay. So is it, is it all sunshine and rainbows amongst the UTSA faithful? <laughs> it sounds like it. And, and I, uh, I, I, I'll probably be one of the few people that you'll talk to that has a little bit of apprehension about it because a 10 year contract in college football, man, I, that is, that it would be the UTSA's entire duration as a college football program. Like mm -hmm. half of that will be under depth trailer. Like, that's crazy. You just don't see that in the college football game anymore. Um, but I do feel a little bit better when I saw the actual contract. The UTSA buyout, if they wanted to fire Coach Trailer, is only 60% of his remaining salary at that point in time. 
Mm. Right. So it's a $28 million deal, let's say in year six, you know, things kind of spin out of control. They, they want to move in a different direction. Uh, so you're looking at what, maybe 12, 14, $15 million left, but then the buyout mm -hmm. would only be 60% of that. Mm -hmm. So that gets that buyout down to a much more manageable number than if you're talking about a 100% fully guaranteed 10 year contract, which mm -hmm. would be practically impossible to, to buy your way out of. Right. So it does give UTSA a little bit more flexibility, uh, which is really nice because as you, we all know, those large buyouts can kind of torpedo a program. Right. So. Yes. Uh, great, great job from athletic director, Dr. Lisa Campos on that one. Absolutely. Looks like your cat is a, a Jeff trailer fan too. He's always got to uh, make an appearance. Yeah. yeah, he has to, you know, he, he's a big fan of the triangle of toughness. <laughs> he is. He's, he's at the top of it. Um, okay. So, all right. And I feel like Gary Patterson has some of this, these qualities of what I'm about to explain or about to ask your, you know, your opinion on. So I feel like Gary Patterson, again, is his seat maybe getting kind of hot, possibly, or kind of, but I feel like in some terms, and, and my wife graduated from from TCU, and she can speak to this. And he's very well liked, to say the least, amongst the TCU alumni and all that. But he's somewhat of a made man, you know, taking them from the from the Mountain West. Was he with them pre Mountain West too? When in when they were in the, I I, I don't know, but Honestly, anyway, I don't he, even remember what conference they were in before that. But the WAC, I think, has, has I think they were in the WAC through their whole extension. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know they were in the whack at one point. I'm not sure if it was right before the Mountain West or anyway, but so he brought them into the promised land of the P5 world and stuck with them. And, you know, so I feel like they're just very loyal to him. Like, you know, he he's again, kind of somewhat of a made man there. Mm -hmm. um, not obviously that can wear out, you know, over time though. But do you feel like coach trailer bringing you guys to uh, you guys are, Eight and seven and oh, eight and oh, eight and oh, and ranked 16th, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, I that's mean, that's silly. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's unheard of. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's amazing. So he's brought you guys into national, uh, into the national spotlight, you know, and we're still in Conference USA. He's done it in, in this, in this whack hole, but anyway, um, he's done the impossible, but. So do you feel like he's going to have some of that moving forward past this year? Um, or let's say you guys get a really co competitive bowl bid and it doesn't shake out. Like it's just, you know, it's just, I mean, if y'all, if you guys play a Florida or something like that, I mean, I'm just spitballing a name out there. I mean, it, it, if Florida were, were to beat UTSA handily, I don't think it says anything like, Oh, UTSA is not a good program. It's just, that's an sec school. So it's just, Okay, so if you guys happen to play a big, big dog in, in a um, in a bowl game this year, and it doesn't work out in your favor, a and then b, I um, I know you had spoken to me prior at some other video we did or something, but you guys are very senior heavy. So if they take a significant dip after this year, because I mean, if you're going to lose a lot of seniors, I mean that's any co even Alabama will take a dip and lose a game, right? Like, but um, do you think there will be any like? knives and pitchforks so we're paying this guy all this money you know whatever or do you feel like again he's just in that made man status as as of now i know that was kind of wordy but what are your thoughts yeah. on all that and i can reiterate that any of that if you need um, me to um so i think I'll, I'll answer in two parts uh, as far as the team being senior, senior laden like that is true um i think there's something like 22 seniors and 12 of them are super seniors um so the non-super seniors can all return they have an extra year from COVID, right so signing a trailer to a long-term contract is, is huge because it increases the likelihood of some of those seniors that are starters that are able to come back will do so. Uh, the majority of the senior starters are depth guys. So there are a few that will be big losses for sure. Um, but if trailer is able to bring back the majority of the non-super seniors for their sixth year, uh, that puts you, in my opinion, that puts UTSA right back in the driver's seat as you know being the, probably the top team at Conference USA, right? Um, some of those guys are probably surefire picks to get drafted, but not the majority of them. Right. So, um, I think it definitely increases the odds that UTSA is able to, you know, just reload, um, after losing just those 12 super seniors, um, to your other point, I think you were kind of implying that maybe trailer will raise the expectations for the program, uh, to a point where, you know, he could suffer from that. 
I think that's definitely a concern, right? Um, you do see this in other programs. You know, I think A&M is a good example. Uh, when Kevin Sumlin was like, go oh, there, like the things that he was accomplishing at A&M are, are things that that program hadn't done in decades, right? Um, he wasn't able to consistently perform the way that they did when they had Johnny Manziel and Mike Evans there and all of that. Um, so he was kind of a victim of his own success in that regard that he got them into the SEC and he got them to be a, you know, a championship contender in that conference, but he couldn't sustain it reliably. So that's definitely going to be the challenge for Jeff Trailer, right? Is actually building and sustaining a program without plateauing, right? Um, so can they get to that top of the G5 level and be there every single year the way that Boise has been and the way that UCF has been? Because um, for a comparison, you know, look at what Memphis is going through right now, right? Like they were at that level for several years. They made an internal promotion and their current head coach isn't kind of living up to those expectations, even though they're still a pretty solid team, right? So... I wouldn't say his seat is warm, but it's starting to, or sorry, I wouldn't say his seat is hot, but it's starting to warm up, right? So that's going to be the challenge for Trailer, as well as like making sure that the university continues to invest in their athletics program and not just like, oh, here's a one-time thing to give you a, a bump up. And then like, we're just going to stay here for 10 years, right? It's got to be a, a continual investment. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I feel like you do extremely well and i want to point out because i'm about to ask you a question that's not really utsa related but okay. i feel like you truly obviously you're a utsa fan and you cover utsa primarily on on sb nation if i'm if i'm mm -hmm. stating that correctly mm -hmm. um where but again you are a utsa fan however where, where i feel like you do a great job of is uh you you really are able to put your fanship aside and i admire it and i try to do that as much as i can but and we'll talk just truly what you think about other programs in Conference USA or, or just G5 football in general. And, you know, like you said, I mean, you're not coming on here and say, you know, UTSA is, you know, the second coming of Christ, which if you right. were, right. Um, I, I wouldn't blame you for saying that or thinking that, honestly. Yeah. I mean, as, as much as I hate to say it as a North Texas fan, I wouldn't blame you. But, I mean, you're staying pretty even kill. That's very good. It's very Jedi-like of you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, um, uh, so my question for you, this is a, a coach Latrell question, and okay. I'm going to have a few people on this week and I'm going to ask them the same question. I really just want to get your take on it and just hear, you know, your perspective being that you are the way that I just stated that you are and you're an outsider's perspective too. So you really don't have a dog in the fight too much other than, you know, I, I, I think we both want UTSA and UNT to do well simultaneously, yep. especially going at the new conference together. And just for the rivalry, it would just be, I better, you know, we would yeah. both benefit from that anyway. Okay. So we're going to play a little armchair athletic director really uh -huh. quick. And I will be the first. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with coach Luttrell, whether we lose every game from here on out or we win every game from here. On out. I, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's anyone's guess and that's all we're doing is guessing and, you know, just speculating, but here's my, Thing that I want you to, to tell me what your thought thoughts on is. Um, so let's say Coach Luttrell wins out every game this year, and the rest of our games are Southern Miss, FIU, and UTEP. UTEP is obviously competitive, but I would say, yeah, but I would say those three games are all three of those are winnable. Like you know, UTEP being the most competitive. Um, but FIU, Southern Miss, very winnable, and UTEP still not out of reach. So if he could somehow manage to win, you know, those three, and then we take a loss to UTSA, would put us at five and seven. So one game better than we were last year. Um, do you think that would be enough for them to push on another year? And it's kind of a million dollar question from the standpoint of I think I've heard his buyout after this year is two million. That's what I've heard. I don't know if that's true. I mean, it very well could not be, but I've heard it's two million. So keeping him another year kind of saves some money. We do have a young team. It does give him maybe an opportunity, like, okay, like we're this is more so of a money saving move because we're not paying you before Coach Trailer anyway came along, top of the conference to beat the teams you should beat. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're getting paid to be you're in the North Texas region. You're, you know, you're getting paid to, you know hopefully win the West almost every year, you know, the kind of money he's getting paid. But anyway, do you think if, you know, we were to win FIU, Southern Miss and UTEP, they would keep him for another year? It's a very difficult question to answer. And I, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer at, at this point in the season, right? There might come a point where it becomes obvious. 
if I'm Renbaker, what I'm doing right now is I'm working back channels to gauge interest, right? If I can go out and I can get a candidate that I feel really, really good in and a candidate that I think can compete at the top of the AC, I'll make that move, right? $2 million you can budget around, right? It's, it's not a backbreaker, um, especially with UNT's operating budget, right? I think they're like $40 million a year or something like that, right? You, you, can, you can work around $2 million for sure. But I don't think that it, you know, I don't watch every UNT game as closely as you guys do. And I don't see the sideline, right? Because I'm just watching on TV. But my impression is that this team hasn't quit on Seth Luttrell, right? And I think you saw that in that overtime win against Rice, right? Like they're, they're still fighting really hard, right? Uh, the recruiting is still really, really strong as well. You know, I, I think Seth has done an incredible job raising kind of that baseline of talent uh, to where now the expectation is that most of the starters are going to be you know, legitimate three-star composite rating guys, right? Um, again, if that slips and the recruiting class is in shambles, then you got to make a move, right? Because you can't afford, like, that's why UTSA suffered for quite a while because they had, like, two classes that were just complete bomb out bottom of FBS, right? And that'll kill a program for a long time. It's hard to recover from. Um, so if I'm Ren, you know, I'm keeping a close eye on the atmosphere, in, in the team facility and, and on the sideline, right? Are the guys still invested? Are they still playing as hard as they should be? And then on the recruiting front, like, is there still uh, a fervent effort to to bring kids on visits and, and close the deal, get them to commit uh, to the mean green, right? Like if the answer to either of those is no at any point in time, then you got to pull the trigger because waiting a year too long can really bear your program, right? Uh, but on the other hand, obviously saving $2 million is great. Um, you've seen great improvement from the defense under Phil Bennett. And I think if the quarterback play was better, you know, this team would be able to compete with anyone in this conference. So um, I still think Latrell's a good coach. You know, I, things haven't really gone exactly the way that we would hope for them to go, but they haven't been a train wreck yet. Right. And I, I know for a UNT fan, it can feel that way. Uh, but, but relative to the rest of the conference and the rest of the country, you know, UNT is still competing in, in their games for the most part. Right. So, I still think there's a chance you can turn around. I'm not going to go out and say, you know, sign the chaw to an extension or anything like that. Um, but I, I think like Ren Baker has to be very, very deliberate, right? Because uh, especially, you know, if you're trying to get like a Texas guy, right? Like pulling the plug on someone too early can be seen as a negative, right? And like this admin is not going to give me time to build my program and all of that. So it's fascinating. I'm watching it closely, you know, um, I can't wait to see what happens, but you guys have a tremendous athletic director. So I would oh, not yeah. be stressing out if I was a UNT fan. Yeah, we love Rim Baker, man. We yeah. we really he, do. He's um, Absolutely. Yeah, he 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 truly is. Him and yes, and uh, President Samatric, if I'm saying his name correctly, they mm. they've got a they're a good two team tandem. Hopefully, they stay here for the long term. But mm. anyway, anyways, Jared, um, anything else we need to touch on before we jump off here? Uh, no, I you know I've got a million people texts to respond to, as you can imagine. It, it's been crazy uh, with this contract extension, but. Uh, yeah, I, I guess like my parting message for UNT is like, I, I hope that they invest at the level that UTSA is investing in right now. Cause I, I know they're capable of it and I know that they have the same desire to win and it, it, it's great for both programs and it's great for the whole AAC. Right. So, uh, if any boosters listen to this, open up the checkbook and, you know, let's get a little arms work going on because yeah. it's going to help everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. But coming from a UTSA fan too. Uh, well, quite the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> like the hey, look, com. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's best for a, a 10 win UTSA team and a nine win UNT team to battle out at the end of the year. Right. Absolutely. Good, good Absolutely. Good ratings, good recruits. We all win. We, we do. We all eat at the big table. Um, well, hey, Jared, thanks so much. And, uh, you know, look forward to talking with you again shortly. I'm, su I'm sure. And one, one more time, where can the people find you at? Yeah, so my personal Twitter is at Jared UTSA. It's up on the screen here. And then uh, if you want to follow our podcast and our Patreon, it's at Alamo Audible, where we have all of our content. Uh, and then, of course, I do a lot of stuff on Underdog Dynasty as well. So uh, Conference USA coverage, which I guess is going to turn into AC coverage maybe in the future. Uh, let's do, got to figure that out. Uh, but I do a lot of, uh, you know, Conference USA wide coverage over there as well. Awesome. All right, Jared. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks, brother. You too.